Yeah, yeah. I mean, did we have, did we, did we ever think of what we're going to call this thing? No. But I, we can do it sometime soon. All right. So, basically, we, we'll do an introduction first so people know what exactly they're watching. You know what I mean? That's Essentially, we'll call it the un, our untitled podcast, and then... I guess I'm doing it right now. And Jay... Think about it. <laughs> But, uh, He's our first guest. Jay is our first guest. <laughs> wow. You're a guest for once. Can you believe that? I feel special. But yeah, with that said, this is Jeff and Mark's untitled, currently untitled podcast. The Podcaster's Podcast. That I'm really selfish, it. so like I wanted in on it, so I asked Mark if we could do a podcast together like all the time. And so. I was more than happy to do so. Awesome. It just sounded like... I don't want to be a, a guest as much as I wanted to actually be a, a, a co-host. Yeah, well, I mean... Uh, well, fighting you, ain't going to last forever. you got to think of a, right, you an know? exit strategy at some point. If so enough people want to listen to me talk, then, you know, that's fun. I like talking. Yeah. yeah. I mean, some people seem to like it. Podcasting is a thing now, and it's only getting bigger. So. Yeah. It's a good time to get in, I guess. I've, I listen to podcasts all the time in the me car. I, I listen to that more than I do the radio, so... Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know who has a podcast now that I liked at first and realized he's just a fucking prick. And I used to like him when he was on the radio, but remember Mo from Q92? Yeah, he's terrible. Oh, he's have, terrible. have you heard his podcast? I, I know him personally. He's just not, he's a he's a douche. He yeah. really is. And and I always knew that. And but I always liked his radio show, but he always had co-host with him. And I think they kind of kept him more I don't know what the word is I'm looking for, but I started watching his podcast, and it's, it, God, it's just terrible. Yeah, you sent me a link to it, and I couldn't even get through the whole video. I was just like, this guy's such a fucking dude. Well, he's he's a name dropper, too, which, that shit just drives me fucking crazy. But the one I sent you was when he interviewed Jason Mewes, because I thought you might like that. And he was just talking it up like it was this big deal, and how him and J- Jason Mewes are just really good friends, and they met somewhere years ago, and they've always been friends, and... I thought you would enjoy it. Yeah. And then, so I sent it to you before I even had a chance to listen to the whole thing. And the interview with Jason Muse is like 10 minutes, yeah. but the podcast around it's like an hour and a half. Yeah. And the whole time he's talking about his interview and how great it was. And, and it was barely anything. But I was listening to another one um, just a few days ago, and he was, I don't know if he's just in a pissed off mood or what, but whoever was there helping him, he's like, yeah, I got it fuck this, blah, 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 you, you, fuck you, and you, you need to get closer to the mic, and you need to do this, and you need to do that, and I was like, what a on fucking a, douche. On a personal level, like, just like, when he's not, doesn't have a microphone in front of his face, he's not a bad guy, he yeah. really isn't, he, he, you know, he's, he, he's, he's friendly, mm-hmm. he's not, but when he has a mic in front of him, it's like, his opinion is the only, One is knows. the right way, is yeah. the right thing, and... And it's just like it's so annoying sometimes because you're like you got to look at things of the other you gotta you gotta look on the other side too you, you know you can't always be right nobody's always right you think that's like maybe like a, a front or maybe like an embarrassment type thing like I think he it's gets a front. in front of that microphone and he just can't be wrong but off the microphone he's just kind of a normal yeah, dude yeah yeah I, I really think that's it and so it's just uh, like a persona when you have the microphone in front of your face your opinion is the one that matters the most. It's your show. Yeah. It's like it's like yeah. the guy that brings the gun to the knife fight. Kind, kind no, <laughs> no, I don't see the. Like, it, I kind I kind of understand what you're saying with that. Um, the guy who brings the gun to the knife fight is the one that's going to be right. Because yeah. oh, if I pull yeah. out a knife and he pulls out a gun, I'm agreeing with the other guy. He, it's his show, so he can say, "If you don't like what I'm saying, don't watch. Yeah, turn don't listen." No, I and I get that, but uh, you know doesn't mean what you're saying is always right. Like, I I know sometimes shit comes out of my mouth and I'm like, okay, that wasn't right. Yeah. Or, you know, so if we, we disagree on something, which we're going to disagree on stuff. Yeah, yeah. I at least have the respect towards you to go, okay, I understand where you're coming from. No, this is where sure. I'm coming from. For sure. Like, so, yeah. and I don't, I don't, sometimes he doesn't do that well. And there's a lot of people in the media that, that don't do that. No, no. At sure. all. It says a lot about a person that can, like, swallow their pride and be able to, like, man right. up about shit. But, uh... Yep. I guess we, we could start talking about one of those topics you had. Like, awesome. Which one would you like to start with, so... All right, so... I kind of just... We don't have really much to talk about, but I kind of wanted to talk about uh, 
kind of like what our favorite stuff is. Gotcha. And the topic, the first one is since everybody in this room likes comics, we like comic book movies, we like the whole superhero. Five best villains in comic book or comic book movies. Nice. All right. It doesn't have to be five best, I guess, but it can be uh, who's your favorite villain? Hmm. And, you know, kind of talk a little bit about them, why why you think that way. Favorite villains. Um, it'll probably be DC villains because I like DC a lot. I'm a DC guy. But uh, come on now, Walt. I know you got an opinion on these villains, <laughs> but you don't need to, like, cut me off. Um, <clears throat> number one, everybody's probably top answer for most people is the Joker. You know what I mean? Love the Joker. There's not much you can't like about the Joker but, um, but I'm, I'm, I've always been like a huge Deathstroke fan too Deathstroke Ooh, is cool it's a good one he, and he, he's dealt with the Green Arrow a lot too and the Green Arrow is my favorite so so I, it would probably be those two guys when it comes to like comic books that's for DC anyway but Marvel's got some pretty pretty cool guys too yeah does it does it have to be like a superhero villain? Or no, can... just like villain, you know, in, in TV or movies. Okay, or, uh, well then mine's Negan. That's Negan, a, that is that's, that's everybody's new favorite. Yeah. It, yeah, he's just he's he's fucking awesome. And Mark and I just had this conversation before on a podcast about how you're supposed to hate him, but you can't help but love him. Yeah, you can't actually, help but like. Him. I watched that, and it, it's the same thing. It's the the 1996 Stone Cold effect. Yeah, he's supposed to be a bad guy. But he's so likable that you can't <laughs> help it but to like him. Yeah. Like, I mean, there are people that absolutely hate Negan, and there's also people that that they they understand the character pretty well. And it's like, so I, I think the people that really do like him are the ones that are saying, "I'm capable of this if this ever happened. Like, I might be in that position yeah, to do the, the shit he does." The people that most identify with Negan. right, yeah. That's Negan's biggest fan. Right. I'm a huge fan of Negan. (laughs) That's a good comparison. Well, a good comparison, I guess, would be like, in reality, Conor McGregor's kind of like a a villain in a sense, like, but that you can't help but like just because he's so entertaining about it. Right. But like, if you were directly involved in it, you'd probably hate that motherfucker. Yeah. And I feel like you'd probably hate Negan if you weren't an outsider looking (laughs) at him. Right. If he was, if you were Rick, yeah. <laughs> you, oh yeah. If anybody said to me, "I just put my dick down your throat and you thank me for it," I would want to shoot that motherfucker in the face. <laughs> so. And the thing is, and 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 what gets me if if you you look through the eyes of Rick, the power of your children is what. Is, and, and Negan knows this, the power of your love for your children is what is controlling you. If it wasn't for Carl and it wasn't for Judith, Rick would have already tried to shoot him, would have already tried to kill him. Would have, oh, for sure. Would, this shit wouldn't be happening. But the fact that he knows Negan can kill his kids like that is why, and, and, and that's real life too, because like, you know, I, I would do anything, I would, anything in the world for my kid, yeah. safety, you mm-hmm. know? So if he wanted me to go collect a thousand pounds of goods i'm i'm collecting 1500 pounds just so you don't touch my kid you know especially in a in a situation like that like a post-apocalyptic zombie world like it's you even have you have so much to worry about already let alone intelligent human beings who have a vendetta or Mm -hmm. motives so especially with as many fucking games negan plays with rick (laughs) Like, if I showed up and the guy who killed two of my friends was sitting on my porch next to my son holding, holding my daughter, yep. who yeah. just, oh, I don't know how long it was on the show, but the week prior or two weeks prior told him he just put his dick down his throat, you know what I mean? That would fuck with my head. Yeah. And, and I, some people, oh, sorry, my bad. Some people hate, it's kind of turned into The Walking Dead now, but, uh, you know, so, where was I going with that before his phone went off? Uh, <laughs> it's all right. Um, like he's so uh, he's so good at what he does. It's it's kind of crazy. Like y- you can tell he really likes the character. Mm-hmm. Really likes playing that character. Yep. So I don't know. He's really a perfect choice for Negan in a lot of ways. Yeah, he did some good work. Um, what about you, sir? Well, I have. Obviously, the Joker is number one. 
Yeah. Um, but you know, if you take away the Joker, it's probably Magneto. If you want to call him a villain, it's hard to call a villain because he, you know, if you watch the movies, he's with the X Men at first, and then he's against them. Even the cartoon, like you thought he was the main villain, but sometimes he would help the X Men against Apocalypse or, yeah. or whatever. Yeah, he was like an he. He was a, a rebel in another way. Like, the X-Men were more of, like, a diplomatic way of dealing with persecution about the mutants. But, like, Magneto was more of a extremist view. You know what I mean? Yeah. So He, he almost had the same agenda, but just a different outlook on yeah. it. Yeah. Like, yeah. He wanted every... He wanted... Yeah, so I liked like, him a like, lot. I guess a good comparison would be, like, like the X Men were like a Martin Luther King, and Magneto was like Malcolm, a Malcolm X. X. Yep, that's By a good way to put it. Necessary. Yep. Um, and he's not in my top favorites, but one that I think gets kind of disrespected a lot, and I really liked him. And he's newer, so, but uh, Kylo Ren. I like Kylo Ren. He's got a, a lot of. He kind of has it like whiny crybaby about him but he you know he was like third generation badass so you know it's like uh he's kind of entitled to that a little bit yeah no he's he's got like the thing is people a lot of people didn't like kylo ren because he was very emotional and uh like he he they people went in thinking of him as like a darth vader who like had gone through so much shit and at that point point in his life like when he was Darth Vader he was emotionally scarred and kind of cold and emotionless in a lot of ways until like Luke came around and things started popping up but uh Kylo Ren is younger he hasn't dealt with all that shit over time he's dealt with a lot of shit uh but he's uh there's a lot there's a lot there to Kylo Ren he's he's he doesn't have it all together and that's what I like about it and I think he's been around you know uh Anakin had like different people pulling at him. He had the, the the Jedi's and the dark side pulling at him, and, and I don't think Kylo Ren ever had that. But he was raised by, you know, uh, Princess Leia and uh, like, uh, Han, Solo. Han Solo. Yeah. yeah. So he's always had that, and he and what I like about him is he said screw that. He took another path and had no nobody telling him to take that path. He just yeah, took yeah. it on his own. He uh yeah he had his own little. From what I mean, there's so many unanswered questions there. That's why I can't wait for the next movie and the third one. Cause, like, and that's why, because I saw Rogue One and I, I said Rogue One was better, but time will tell because there's so many unanswered questions. Uh, but I forgot where I was going with that. Um, fuck, what was I saying? I don't know. Did you guys see the Saturday Night Live skit they did with Kylo Ren, <laughs> where it was supposed to be an undercover boss. Yeah, Kylo and, Ren but everybody, clip of that, but yeah. everybody knew that it was him, and <laughs> yeah, it was pretty good. That was funny. But Kylo Ren, he's a good one. I like. It, there's a lot of depth to Kylo Ren. That's why I like him. Very underrated, not very respected, but I think it's all in the second and third movie. It's gonna come back around, and people are gonna be like, okay, yeah, he was awesome. Yeah, yeah, and. Same with that subject is with Star Wars is Darth Maul did not get a fair shake. No, he could have been fucking awesome, well, and they ruined it. It's recently been uh, confirmed that Darth Maul didn't die. He's in that Star Wars Rebels show. I knew that, and, he and I never, I never somehow. watched any of those. But well, you know who didn't get a fair shake though? Jar Jar Binks. Oh, Don't no. <laughs> Turns mic off. Yeah, get the fuck out of here. Uh, oh come on, he's in too many movies oh, as on. is. Listen to the blunts. Worst character in Star Wars. <laughs> there history. was uh, a rumor going around before <laughs> Force Awakens came out that Kylo Ren was uh, Jar Jar Binks in there, and he was like, "This <laughs> adventure, <laughs> it was like, like he was. That's why he was obsessed with Darth Vader and shit because <laughs> it was Anakin. <laughs> oh, that's funny. That's insane. That would have been absolutely awful. The uh, what was the other one? I remember this was way before they even announced uh, Rogue One or even force awakens but they were saying that darth maul had connection like they thought there was a fan theory that he was general grievous uh, 
and I get it, yeah. but I don't. I was like, because he, you know, General Grievous was all, you know, he was yeah, all machine. Yeah. Hit, like four arms and shit. Yeah, and I was like, uh, it's stretching it a little bit, guys. But some of those fan theories, when they all pan out, you're like, the ones that you think are stretching it, you're like, fuck. Yeah. Uh, fan theories kind of piss me off sometimes because they're right sometimes. Like the West, like both big Westworld fan theories were totally fucking right. So I, I try to now. Like what was that? Big it. who? Westworld. I don't know that. Oh, you know what? It's on HBO. Oh, yeah. Good. I don't have HBO. It's like a, it's like a theme park or whatever. It's based on that old movie by the guy who made Jurassic Park and shit. Okay. He wrote Jurassic Park, the books and shit, Michael Crichton. And uh, you basically go to this theme park that's just inhabited by all artificially intelligent uh, robots and shit. And you can do whatever you want. You can kill people. You can fuck people. You can do whatever you want. But they can't. They can't kill you. And, like, that's starting to change. So, like, it's a good show. I don't want to spoil no. it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to have to check that one out. I want to get HBO Go since Stop. I'm a huge Game of Thrones fans as is. Yeah, so. yeah that's about to come to an end, too, though. Uh, it's stupid. Two Shush. Half seasons. Shush. It's Sorry. not going to come to an end. They're going to write more. They're well, going to change their mind. Prequel shows. I'd say I... It, you know, Knock it off with the prequels. Well, no, please. I, th- I want to see the prequel to that. You game. do? The the prequel story, like the history to Game of Thrones, is almost better than the story of Game of Thrones. Yeah, but I think they explained it pretty good on the show so far. Kind of. Well, I, wa- I want to, once they end the show and you know everything about it, I feel like there's going to be so much more there that you're going to want to know about. Yeah, well, but I'm not know. a huge fan with that. Um, all right, next subject. Yeah, that was a good one, though. Yeah. This one's not going to be as long, I don't think. Um, one of my favorite actors, Brad Pitt. My, one of mine, too. Uh, some, good some of your favorite movies by him, and and, and kind of why. Gotcha. I can't. I know there's a, quite a few that I like, but I, I can't. I probably won't be able to think of them all. And when well, I, I like, think... edit this later, I'm going to be like, damn. Should have that, that one. I think the first one that would come to anybody's mind is Fight Club. Yeah, that's sure. which one was which movies. was great. So let's just get that one out of the way and be like unanimously, we think Fight Club is probably his player. best role. Yeah. yeah, I would if I had to say my favorites, it would definitely be Fight Club in the top three. Hmm. I loved Inglorious Bastards. That's a good one. And uh, was that like a fist bump with knees on that one? Yeah, I think so. Um, <laughs> And then I really liked the Benjamin Button movie. Oh, that was an awesome that was, one. That was pretty good. Yeah. That was, that that was, was really underrated. good. That was underrated. That didn't do nearly as well. That was a, a... When I first couple times I watched it, it was almost up there like with a Forrest Gump to me. I was like, wow, that's... No, it was, it yeah. was good. really good. Yeah. I mean, it was crazy. And then you uh, got like Mr. and Mrs. Smith, which were... Those were good movies, but Angelina Jolie is so fucking... Hot. I can't stand her. I don't, I don't like her at all. I didn't like that movie. But I think she's, I think she's good looking. I didn't like Mr. and Mr. Smith all that. I mean, it, at the time, I didn't think it was bad, but, like, I wouldn't want to watch it all the time. Anyway. I'll tell you, my, my, probably, no, I could go back after I watch this and probably hate myself, but my second favorite Brad Pitt character was the one in, was Achilles in Troy. No, oh, Troy yeah, is that was another good underrated movie. That movie is awesome. Troy like, good, really It good sucked because it, it came out before 300, but more people got into 300, I think, because it was, you know, nothing so, but guts and It was just blood. macho as fuck. Yeah, it was, you know, you got... As opposed to, like, a historical... Gay, or... ripped up dudes walking, killing people the whole time. <laughs> but, uh, it, the... Troy just has a great story, and, uh, and he was, he played such a good Achilles. He, you know, that part where he's standing out in front of the gate looking for Hector... I watch that sometimes it gives me chills I'm like that whole, damn that's sweet that whole fight sequence there was awesome yeah and like even the like what was it the, I think it might have been the opening scene in the movie or like it's real real like uh, early in the movie where he fights that one guy that was a wrestler Nathan Jones like, yeah. yeah and he fucking stabs him in like the jugular or whatever <laughs> yeah. and just gets him like right in the heart through there and he just drops that was so bad he screams like that's the way I feel sometimes like after a fight or something I'm like is there no more <laughs> <laughs> Because, you know, you get, you're get you running full of testosterone and shit. You're, like, crazy, ready to f- kill everybody. It's fucking launching at him. That was sweet. That yeah. was a good one. Speaking of Achilles, I saw... You are talking about that scene where he's standing outside the gate. I just saw... Somebody made a video, and it was on Facebook. 
but it was they like photoshopped other faces on the characters and um achilles was donald trump <laughs> coming for the white house and then it was obama standing behind the gate getting ready to walk out and then you see michelle and Joe hillary Biden. standing there and yeah did you see it <laughs> yeah it was, it's, so it was pretty funny some of those are really good and really impressive because I, <laughs> I don't know anything about computers, and I couldn't do it. I just like watching them. <coughs> Shit, I don't, I don't like. I already said Fight Club. I can't think of too many, uh, too many other movies you guys didn't mention. But uh, I mean, Seven, Seven's a good one. Yeah, I, and I almost think Seven's a little overrated, in my opinion. Uh, uh, it's, it's, it's it's good. It's but, creepy. Definitely yeah, creepy. It is. It, it's a horror movie, really. Right. Essentially, it's a horror movie. Um, I like horror movies. I love horror movies, and my and my favorite horror movie, which doesn't get considered a horror movie because it was so good, was uh, Silence of the Lambs. Oh yeah. I've never. Everybody I've never calls that a thriller and, and all that, but it, it was it's a horror movie. If you break it down into pieces. It's a horror movie. You got two two serial killers. You got you know a cop and. She's trying to figure out one, how to catch the one. She goes through the other. Yeah. So, that was good. And then I'm running out of time. Oh, I got you. Yeah, we, we So, I got one more. One more. Gotcha. We're at like 20-some minutes anyway. So yeah. I actually got a message from Shane. So, he must have saw you. Know I mean, <laughs> nice. Yeah. yeah. Um, Shane I haven't read it so I don't know what he's saying, but. I think it's probably stop about, using my name, you fucktard. <laughs> yeah, you might be young. I was like, dude, don't, don't associate you yourselves with me. He said, "Hey, dude, I don't know if you can use it, but I'm working on an album. I'm aiming for an April release. I don't know if your podcast could do something like that. If your podcast could do something like that, it's heavy, like neutron star heavy. Nice. Let's bring him in for a guest. We we should. Yeah. We definitely should. Because yeah. I haven't seen Shane since his wedding. Shane, if you're watching this and we haven't got a hold of you already. I don't have any contact info for you other than on Facebook, but I think Jeff probably does. Uh, if he still has the same phone number, I, I still have it. So, so. If we haven't got a hold of you already, we're I know where he works, so I'll, I'll hunt him down. Cool. Yeah, because Shane's been my... Dude, Shane was my first friend. He, he was my first friend, When too. I moved to Canton. He was my first friend. He was the first, first kid I met. He was on my bus. I <laughs> sat with him the first day, and we were home. Yeah, he's always been a good dude. Shane's, I was so yeah. hard on him, too. But it was all... You know, he was my, one of my best friends. But yeah, Shane, we'll get a hold of you. And so we're going to dork it up just a little bit more. Because, <laughs> cool. you know. We're dorks, man. That's yeah, what that's that. what I do. Uh, best WWF slash WWE heavyweight champions of all time. And this is what I want top five. Hmm. Sorry, I got to end Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go for it. You first. Honestly, I, I can't really answer that very well because... I don't follow wrestling as much as I used to way back in the day. Way, way back in the day. Like, well over 20 years ago, mm. back in the day. Back so, when we were what? Yeah. The last time we watched wrestling. Um, honestly, uh, nobody comes to mind because I just... I don't know. Go ahead. I'll, I'll think of something, maybe. Um... Mine are probably going to be mostly from, like, the golden era and... Attitude era. Attitude era, because that that's when I was watching, really. The and height. one of them will probably be from the mo- the new era. Is that what they call the PG? They're well, kind of... They're out of the PG era, The PG right? era was the era that they were just in. This is the new I era. I hate... I hate the PG era. They're, they've been... They've been saying, like, some curse words a little Good. bit. The, they've been bleeding. Like it's, see, that's it's, what I hated. They every time like they would PG bleed, they bring in a doctor and shit. I'm yeah. like, come on. It's like PG thirteen. They're doing a lot more stuff. They're trying to get their ratings up. There's a brand split and shit now. Yeah. But uh, uh fuck. I mean, I can't remember if a lot of the. Uh, I'll probably just be naming favorite wrestlers because okay. I don't even know if they actually held the title. I'm pretty but, good uh, about knowing if they did or not, so... I mean, there's... There's Ultimate Warrior. There's Macho Man. Um, those are probably, like, two of my favorites from, like, the Golden Age. If that is, in fact, the Golden Age. I think so, yeah. The 80s were... Um, early 90s. Probably two of the most memorable ones, too. Back then, there was only so many huge stars. Yeah. Well, Hulk Hogan only let so shit. many pe- people be stars. That's, that's why. That's it, was all, it was all under Hulk's... Sean fucking Michaels. Sean Michaels, definitely. Junkyard dog. He was not a heavyweight <laughs> champion, but yeah. he was 
He's the bird man. I mean, I don't want to take them all, so I'll leave out some. But uh, currently, the current SmackDown WWE champion, AJ Styles, he's killing it. Yeah. He's killing it. So the new era, he's probably the one I'm most excited about being the champion. So if we go that way, I think my favorite champ from the 80s is Macho Man, but I don't think you can call him one of the better champs because he held it a couple times. It's only when Hogan didn't, he was yeah. gone or, you know, he once in a while, Macho, Macho Man. Man yeah, he kind of, yeah. Macho Man would fit in there. Uh, Hulk Hogan only passed the, tor- passed the torch once, and that, and that was against the Ultimate Warrior, and he didn't run with it very well. Um... I would say from there, Hulk Hogan is probably the best. Tonight. Oh, it's my bad. I'm just noticing we're much closer. Yeah. Um, Hulk Hogan, and um, let's see, from the Attitude. You got a, Bret Hart's in there. He's from yeah, right before the Attitude the Era. Uh, he was one of the better ones. Uh, Rock and Stone Cold, obviously. Yeah. Those are probably the t- But in my opinion, those are the top two wrestlers. Even Mick Foley had a good run there. He did. And it was when Stone Cold was hurt. Undertaker. Uh, Undertaker. But uh, from the new, you know, Lesnar, he, when he, his original run, he was doing some good things. Angle. Back when he spoke. (laughs) Uh, Now all he does is squash, squash matches. Yeah, Paul Heyman talks to him. Sam Punk's run was great. Oh yeah, I CM Punk had a scene. great run. Even when now, now I wasn't even watching it, but I knew. Yeah, yeah. I like CM Punk. I didn't turn the channel when well, CM Punk was on. I remember seeing CM Punk in like Ring of Honor and shit like that. Yeah. So and I didn't like him back then. I was like, Oh, he was a heel. So he, he was like unlikable. Kind he of. was he a very was a unlikable heel. heel. Yeah. Oh, he's a great heel. Uh but I, you know, I'm, I'm sitting there at like eighteen, nineteen, watching Ring of Honor stuff, and I'm like sitting there drinking a beer. Mm. And I'm like, fuck this guy, no, no, you know, sure. Mr. Straight Edge. But uh, once he, once he did the, what does they call it, the pipe bomb or whatever. Yeah. He really turned a corner there. No, because he he went from being a superstar to a fan. Right. He was talking as a fan, like, look, man, this shit sucks. <laughs> it needs to change. Right. What happened to my childhood? So like every everybody could identify with that, especially in that time period. Right. If you want to let her in, she's just gonna keep trying. She'll eventually get it open and some grass. <laughs> and, uh, oh, oh, that's the cat. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. She, she'll get her little paw under there. Fucking and cat. But, uh, yeah, did you Did you say anybody? I think we we covered all of them. Yeah. And he was just waiting for us to... <laughs> Is there anyone... Who? Okay, who... Even if we said him, who would you say to? For, I know you... Oh. I, I did like the Ultimate Warrior a lot. Um... Who's your fa- who was but, your favorite wrestler when you were watching? I think I know, but I want to hear you say it. Um, now? Well, just... Ever. Who was your favorite wrestler, you know what I mean? I, I always liked, like, Andre the Giant. Yeah. And, uh, of course, Hulk Hogan. Um, I remember when I was little, I can't remember the name. I think it was just the WWF <laughs> Superstars or whatever, but it was the cartoon that was on. I was really little. You, either one of neither one of you probably would even remember it. I don't remember cartoons back then, but I know they make cartoons now. But it it kids. was it was all the WWF superheroes, whatever. It was Hulk Hogan, um, uh, like I said, Junkyard Dog, um, Macho Man. I do. I remember seeing stuff. I it's like kind of little flashes. Of it was it, it might have been before my time, but maybe I, I saw a clip. Yeah, of it, it or was something. it was like Saturday morning cartoons. It was. It was all the WWF superstars then, but it was Andre the Giant, um, Coco Beware. <laughs> you know, it was it was. <laughs> uh, the reason, the the one that we didn't say anything about, and he's the greatest heavyweight champion of all time. Any way you look at it is, but he wasn't in the WWF. Was Ric Flair? Oh yeah, yeah. he How would he he won it in the Royal Rumble I think ninety three Royal Rumble mm. and I don't think he after he lost I don't think he won it again I think he's only a one time WWF champion really because they uh they keep claiming that John Cena needs to beat his record of fourteen that's, that's from undisputed. that's from like NWA yeah. WCW yeah. Yeah, yeah. and it's like. WWE owns all that shit now it's kind of just all they, one thing. Uh, WWE owns everything I think they even own Ring of Honor. Do they really? I think so. I don't know that. Um, I could be wrong. I'm not the 
the guy to talk to about that. But I I see clips of them at the Ring of Honor like uh, training center. Yeah. So if they're gonna put that on TV, you think they would own it? Because Vince is really crazy. Like he wouldn't even back in the day he would wouldn't even like really mention WCW even though they were his biggest competitor. No, you know? no. He was, it was kind of weird. Like the, the most he did was like Gilberg. Yeah. And yeah. So stuff like that. Um, I know that uh, even when ECW was like the anti WWF, ECW and WWE were kind of like friends. Well, well Heyman had he got along worked. with Heyman to a certain yeah. extent. Um, and I just I just watched a story about uh, the Road Dog. No, no. Did you see the, Did you see anything about this? This was really know. this was recent. Uh, back when he was uh the roadie Jesse James. Mm. He, and ECW invaded for the first time. Yeah. Um, it was supposed to be, I think, him and uh, I don't remember who he was supposed to tag team with, but it was against RVD and Sabu. And those were the two biggest guys in ECW at the time. Yeah. Most entertaining by far. And Vince wanted them, wanted RVD and, uh, and Sabu to go over on him. And, and Jesse, you know, Road Dog's like, what are you talking about? This is our, like, why, why are you bringing these guys in to beat us? Yeah. And, it might have been a little bit of immaturity on Road Dog's part, but he like threatened to kick the shit out of Vince and all that. Really? Yeah. And wow. uh as storyline or for real? For real. Yeah. Like he called he called his uh his office in, in Connecticut and was like, you know, this, that and the other. And then Vince Vince uh he he said something about you don't have the balls to tell us in person and then the next show, Vince passed him in the back and was like, don't ever question my manhood. So Road Dog called him again and was like, listen here, motherfucker. I'll fly up there right now to kick the shit out of you. Wow. And yeah. this was, this was before he was in WWD, wasn't it? Like, Who's that? Road Dog. No, he was he was uh, Jeff Jarrett's manager, the roadie. Okay. And he yeah, was doing... This was, this was before. He actually did like the DX thing. In it. Yeah, this was before New Age Outlaws before. So they he didn't have shit up eventually. Oh yeah, because when you're a, you're, he's not even a mid card guy. He's a yeah. jobber at this point, and you have the and and he said I think I I gained his respect by saying that because afterwards Vince was like you're right I should come up to you and say you're gonna job out to guys that don't even work for us for sure for sure Vince McMahon's a very forgiving dude. They say very he's the most forgiving guy. Yeah, because like, I think he because he money. fucks up so much. Yeah, and he then people one they don't have a choice but to say. Oh, it's okay. Don't worry. Mm -hmm. But when he realizes he messes up, he's like, now I have to, it's like kind of eye for an eye. Like, well, now I got to accept him back. That too. And uh, I've heard a lot of, uh, if Vince is, he's all about the business. If it's going to be better for the business, he's going to do it. He doesn't care. He'll, he'll swallow his pride. Yeah. And and that's why he's been so successful for 30 some years. Because I mean, after the whole DX thing and Billy, the New Age Outlaws left and went to TNA for a while and were talking mad shit about WWE and Triple H, like, who was their boy. Yeah. But, uh, and then, like, a few weeks later, they DX had a reunion yeah. and they were on WWE. Yep. Like, probably, like, a month or two later. Yeah. So, then they got squashed by uh, The Shield. That was it. Yeah, I remember yeah, that. That was fun. That was fun. <laughs> I, I wasn't watching, but, like, when shit like that happens, I'll search it out right. like, if somebody tells me. And that's all the topics I got for our first yeah. intro show. This is a good, uh, yeah, we're over 30 minutes, so we did pretty, this is a good introduction. Episode. All right. But, awesome. Uh, Jay, thanks for sticking around. Yeah, thanks no for being problem. our first guest. Hey, no yeah. problem. I'm glad I could give you some insight. Thanks. <laughs> thanks. What, one thing I was surprised you didn't say Triple H. Well, I love Triple H. I but didn't say Triple H because I thought you would. Well, that's, that's why, that's why I said now or way back. So, oh, oh, well, he's not really, he, he's more of a running the show kind of guy. Right. But, uh, but no, I did always. It was right him. after the Attitude Errors when he, like, he was still popular in Attitude, but he was definitely fourth to yeah. Rock, Stone Cold, Mick Foley, well, then and Triple H. Too. Triple H wasn't going to leave the business. He was marrying the boss's daughter right. and shit. But I've always loved Triple H. That was my boy. But, uh. Yeah, I just want to mention that. Before we yeah. Know, what the fuck? Why didn't you? <laughs> but because uh, I purposely didn't, and he was. Like, I was. I was. Once Shawn Michaels was gone, he was like my boy. Yeah. But thanks for watching. If you did, this will. Will we said a monthly thing? Probably. Yeah, every Maybe. couple weeks, every, every month. Like, yeah. Yeah. You yeah. know. Cool. I mean, so this is episode one of our untitled show. If you have any suggestions for titles, go ahead and. Let yeah. Them know. Top. 
you know, we'll uh, give us some suggestions and then we'll pick from that. That's how we're going to figure it out. Yeah, or maybe your suggestions will inspire us. Yeah, because I can't think of anything. But uh, maybe we should have brought that up on the fucking... You should start line. doing it with no lights on and call it Lights Out with Mark. <laughs> Just do it all in uh, the, the creepy... Uh, yeah. In the dark camera. Lights Out with Mark. We, we might as well just not even do video and then just do an audio podcast and then just put a blank screen. Do it by candlelight and sip tea. Oh. <laughs> I like tea, ow, ow, but ow, I like ow, coffee ow. more. Me too. All right, maybe we'll drink coffee. Okay, drink coffee. Maybe we'll just call drink. it coffee talk. Coffee talk. No, I think that's fake. Coffee talk with lights out and Mark. All right, we're going to end it on that <laughs> one. So, uh... <laughs> With that said, I'm Mark. This is Jeff. Have a, have a good one.